What's going on guys? Welcome back to another roster review for the May roster update. As always, I'll show you guys how to download these. You really should know by now, but simply go down to rosters, click on active roster. You're going to download the most recent one, which is the May 5th roster update online roster 10. Um, April 13th, there was actually the trade deadline roster update. A lot of people were asking if I was going to do a you know, roster review for that, but it was literally just all transactional. So I'd have been going through and saying, you know, yep, Taylor Hall is now in Boston. You know, yep, Sam Bennett's down in Florida, whatever, whatever. Uh, there was no like rating potential changes, just literally all transactional. Um, this one, we actually have some new players. Also, I've noticed some minor changes. Really not a whole lot changed this most recent roster update. Really was just adding those new players, which makes sense. Uh, this might be the last one we get of the year. Potentially there's one with the playoffs, but the playoff one will probably just have to do with like injured players, not a whole lot else. So um, in regards to the Ducks here, Trevor Zegers is now a 79, he was a 78. Um, other than that, I really couldn't see any changes in terms of ratings and potentials. On the Arizona Coyotes here, Connor Garland's now high top six before he was a medium top six, which I don't mind actually because he's 24, so he doesn't have as many years to grow in franchise. Now, 85 overall high top six, he'll probably get up to an 87, maybe even 88 uh, if he does play well for you in your Arizona franchise or maybe trade from whatever. Other than that, again, I don't really see many changes. Boston Bruins, obviously they now have Taylor Hall because of the trade deadline roster update. Honestly, too. They could probably make him an 88, seeing how good he's been playing with Boston. Clearly, Buffalo was a fluke. He just didn't fit on Buffalo. Buffalo sucked without Eichel. Uh, Hall, I think, is probably better than 87. Some people might argue that. McAvoy's definitely better than 87. But they don't really seem to want to change young defenseman ratings. Uh, after that, I feel like the rest is the same and pretty decent. Gresselick could probably be an 82. Uh, Craig Smith could probably be an 82, the way he's playing on that line with Krejci and Hall. Um, other than that, again, I really didn't notice any changes, but we're going to kind of go through them all just in case you guys see something I don't. Uh, Buffalo Sabres here, Jack Eichel still a medium elite. Again, I think he should be a high elite. Ristolainen still overrated there, 86 medium elite. He should be like 83 low elite. Sam Reinhardt actually got a downgrade from medium elite to low elite, which didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And that reminds me, uh, last time I did this, Pasternak was a low elite for some reason. I thought it was probably a mistake. Turns out it was. He's now a medium elite. Sam Reinhardt being low elite, though, doesn't seem as much of a mistake. It seems like they probably did that. Um, I don't know. I feel like he should at least be high top six, which is honestly better than low elite. I would probably keep him medium elite. Um, I'm saying that word so many times. Uh, you can see Skinner there is still terribly rated. Um, I think Casey Middlestat and Kyle Ocposa, for that matter, both still medium elites, which uh, they definitely should not be. Middlestat should be like a low elite. Ocposa should be like a medium top nine. Uh, Calgary Flames here, again, I didn't really notice any changes on them either. I'm uh, just going to go through here and double check. Again, maybe you guys see something that I don't. Next year, guys, look at the Carolina Hurricanes. Again, no changes that I noticed. Uh, one thing I will point out, I think Gardner's probably a little bit too high rated. Seeing as the guy got put on waivers, didn't get claimed. I feel like an 83 overall defenseman, uh, only making $4 million or whatever, would definitely get claimed. Uh, other than that, though, they look the same. I still think Dougie Hamilton's underrated, but whatever. Uh, Chicago Blackhawks here, again, I don't see any changes. Now, one thing that should be changed, Andrew Shaw is actually retired. Uh, technically, it's an LTIR retired, so um, in-game, usually when that happens, they change the guy's salary to 700K. I think they forgot to do that, so um, hopefully if there is one more update, they can. Otherwise, you just have to do that on your own. Alex Nealander is still medium elite, similar to middle stat. I think it's a little bit too high. Uh, should definitely be a low elite. Carter Avalanche here, I don't see any changes. Kel McCarr, I still think, could be a high elite. Um, other than that, Gerard could even be an 85, he's playing that well. Taze could be 84, 85 as well. Um, other than that, I think, you know, the ratings are pretty similar. I take that back. I want to say Byron was a 77, he's now a 79. Columbus Blue Jackets here, no longer have Felino, no longer have Savard. Other than that, though look to be pretty much the same. I just checked and Byron was upgraded to a 79 in the last update. Honestly, it's not looking like a lot of changes here at all, guys. Um, so the Dallas Stars, one thing I noticed, there's no change, there definitely should be. Um, well, Sammy Vatnin, kind of like Gardner, went on waivers and got claimed, but uh, 83 overall is still probably a little bit too high for him. So Jason Dickinson there in 80. Compare that to Jason Robertson here. Say that overall, uh, if it wasn't for a 23-year-old Russian coming over and Kirill Kaprizov, he probably winning the Calder this year, having a great season. I think I was looking at it like in terms of points per game. He's averaging like 0.895 right now. Kaprizov's averaging like 0.905 or something. So Kaprizov's just barely beating him in terms of points per game. And as you can see, Robertson's a 79 medium top six, lower rated than Faxa, Dickinson, um, tons of guys here. Compare that to Kaprizov, who's an 85. <laughs> I mean, 
It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I don't actually think the Kaprasov 85 rating is wrong. I think that's fine. I think the Robertson 79 is just way too low uh, with how good he's playing. Should be at least an 82 in my mind. Gurianov's an 84. He's playing better than Gurianov. Gurianov could have a good playoff last year on the road to the Stanley Cup final with the Stars. But an 84 still seems like way too much to me again. Uh, Robertson should be at least an 82, if not an 83, seeing as Kaprazov's only had a rookie season. He's an 85, and he's just barely doing better than Robertson. Um, in terms of Detroit here, Alarkin 87 medium elite seems pretty fair to me. I know at one point I think he was like 88 high elite, which was definitely uh, way too much for Larkin. Veranda now instead of Mantha. Um, other than that, again, just really no changes here. So uh, more or less, I guess it's just me picking out things I think really need to be changed, just like the most important things. Edmonton, of course, McDavid, I think is the only high franchise potential player in the game that's under 26. Uh, looking at the rest of the ratings and potentials here, I think they look pretty good. Now the Florida Panthers here guys have the first new player in Spencer Knight. Before I show you him though, I actually want to point out that Mackenzie Weger now has high top four potential. Before it was medium top four, but he's 26, so it really only helps him grow for that one last year. I think Weger has played great this season. She released an 84, maybe even 85. Like he's honestly looked that good. Um, everyone else on Florida I think is the same. So let's take a look at Spencer Knight here. First new player, 80 overall right away. Honestly, I don't really think I could argue with that because he hasn't lost a game yet. One of the better goalie prospects was taken like 13th overall uh, back in 2019. I nailed it um, by the Panthers. Looked really good at the World Juniors aside from that one bad game he played. Looked good in college. I mean, yeah, I think 80 is good. I think medium elite's good. Honestly, you could even make him high elite. I don't mind giving goalies a bit higher potential just because in this game their value is so much lower. The good goalies, kind of giving them that extra potential actually gives them a more realistic value in my opinion. But... Uh, yeah, overall, I think his stats look good um, in terms of the actual stats. Like, they look pretty decent as well. How specific they got with those individual stats, I don't really know, but they look decent to me. Uh, so moving on to the LA Kings here, again, everything looked the same. They don't have Jeff Carter on the team anymore. They do have um, Quinn Byfield called up. I noticed Bornfoot there still has high top six, so he never grows. They definitely need to make him a medium top four. Minnesota Wild, they already mentioned Kaprizov there is 85 medium elite. Um, I think everyone else on this team is basically the same. Actually guys, there is one small change in the Minnesota Wild. Matt Dumb is now a medium elite. Last time they had him at low elite, which again, I think kind of like passion which is the mistake. Montreal here, we actually have our next uh, new player. Before I get to him though, I want to mention Duran still very overrated, 85 medium elite. Uh, he should be like 83 medium top six. I think that's already being pretty fair. Suzuki there, medium top six. I know beginning of the year, everyone wanted him to be like medium elite. I think, you know, high top six is fair for him. I mentioned my trade deadline video, Gustafson 84. Definitely overrated. Now moving on to the player everyone wants to see, uh, since I don't think there's any other changes for the Canadians, and that is Cole Caulfield now in the game, finally. 19 years old there, 5'7", 165, number 22, 78 overall, medium elite. Honestly, that's pretty fair. I think I had him like a 76 medium elite or something, but when I made Caulfield, he had yet to play in an NHL game, so I think the 78 is pretty fair. Medium elite is also what I had him at, and usually he grows a ton. Yeah, look at that shot. I was wondering how good they made his shot. Uh, it's just as good as I had his shot, if not better. His hands might not be quite as good. Deacon's a little bit better, I think, than I had it. Passing, though, definitely lower. Now, as we kind of already know from all the franchises I've done, Caulfield, with that shot and medium potential, gets so nasty in franchise. He's basically guaranteed a Marisha Shard trophy. Only has ADD awareness there. Skating stats, though, are very good. 89 speed, 90 excel and agility. Physical is even worse than defense. 70 aggressiveness and body check. 75 strength. Honestly, like... It's pretty similar to the Cole Caulfield I made, which makes me always think like either I'm doing a really good job when I make my players or someone at EA is taking a little, you know, uh, side eye look at my ratings and maybe uh, helping them make their own 90 discipline there. Yeah, the shot, uh, definitely the craziest thing. So uh, if this Caulfield, it works kind of the same way as the Caulfield I made, like I said, he's going to be absolutely nasty in franchise. Uh, now looking at National Predators here, same thing. Uh, I don't notice any changes, which kind of sucks. Like. You'd hope they'd do something. Colvin and Medium Elite, still a bit too high. I think Duchesne was an 83 still, which seems a little bit low. Uh, so the Devils here, Jack Hughes. I still think High Elite for him is a bit much. I think Medium Elite's a bit more fair. Um, looking at everyone else here, obviously lost both Palmieri and Zajrak. Igor Shrangovich here though. 76 overall, medium top 9. This dude's actually doing decent. Like he's got almost 30 points right now in the year. That is not a 76. A 76 is like a decent AHL player. I mean, like, look at the other guys kind of that are 77s. I believe he's playing better than all of them. He should be at least a 78. Like, 
I don't know. It just makes no sense to me. He's got 30 points. I know prospects aren't proven and they get a higher rating because it's kind of like what they think they'll be, but it uh, seems like a bit of disrespect there on Sharangovich. Now, I know I'm not really one to talk. I didn't even know who that guy was, I think, a couple months ago, but still. Um, having learned, I feel like that's disrespectful. Now looking at the Islanders next, you can see both Ryan Polak and Adam Pellick there, 84 overall, which definitely is a bit disrespectful. Uh, these two guys are like one of the best D pairs in the NHL right now. I think 85 minimum for them, honestly, if not 86. Um, other than that, obviously they added Palmieri Zajac, but uh, Coburn as well, I forgot about that one. The rest of this team though looks the same. Mayfield should definitely be like an 80 medium top 6, even 81, but... Yeah, no real changes there. I think Wallstrom's the same too. I want to check goalies because their goalies have played great for them this year. In particular, Varlamov. He's still 86 high starter, which isn't too bad. Sorokin there. <laughs> He's actually gone down in potential from 82 high starter to 82 medium starter. He was already underrated, I thought. Uh, personally, I'd have him like 83 medium elite, especially since he's 25. Only a couple years left to grow. Uh, why they lowered his potential, I have no idea. Like, there's only minor changes happening. They don't even make sense, the ones that do. Zibanejad, low elite, doesn't really make sense, but he's 27, so whatever. Fox, they're still medium top four, not medium elite. That's pretty crazy to see. Um, I think all the rest of these guys are the same. Now, there is a new player on the Rangers. I just have to find him here. I don't think he's too high rated. Zach Jones, 75 overall there, 19 years old, medium top six. I think that's a fair rating. Uh, he's nothing really crazy. Third round pick there back in 2019. You guys can see his stats, offensive defenseman. I'm sure some Rangers fans might argue it's a little too low, but honestly, I don't think it's that bad. And next, you guys with the Ottawa Senators who actually have two new players. So quickly looking at their range potentials, I really think Stutzla 81 is fine, but Batherson 81, he's playing better than Stutzla, I think. He should be like an 82. Same goes for Josh Norris. He should probably be an 82 as well. Uh, both those guys are older, play more time in the AHL, having better seasons. I think it makes sense to have them rated higher, but have lower potential. Uh, so right there is one of the new players, Jacob Bernard Docker. 20 years old, 78 overall, medium top four. I think that's the exact rating and potential I gave him when I made him. So that's pretty cool to see. First round pick back in 2018. Um, looking at his stats there, they don't look too bad to me. He's a two-way guy. I believe I also have him a two-way defenseman. So yeah, looks very similar to the Jacob Bernard Docker I made. Uh, now there is one more player here, Shane Pinto, 77 overall, 19 years old, medium top six. So one overall below, but he is a year younger. I think Pinto could probably be a 78 as well, 19 years old there. Second round pick back in 2019. I can see shots powerful, but not that accurate, which is why I was saying Caulfield shots can be ridiculous. Puck skills could probably be a little bit better. Um, decent skating there, decent physical. Um, so yeah, I think for a playmaker, they probably should give him a bit better uh, passing, puck control, stuff like that. But um, other than that, decent player. And again, I really don't mind the 77 because he is younger there at 19. Uh, medium top six. He's definitely going to grow. Uh, Philadelphia here. Again, I don't think there's any changes. Gossip Spare, 83 medium elite is still too high. Now, one thing I will point out, Carter Hart is still 84 overall with medium elite potential. I like Carter Hart, but the way he's played the last month and a half, two months, I think he deserves a downgrade. I would make him at least an 83, like something to reflect the fact that he hasn't played well at all. It's weird to me, certain guys don't play well, they just don't care, while other guys don't play well and they nuke their rating. Uh, it doesn't really make sense to me in that regard. Pittsburgh Penguins here, everyone looks to be the same. Obviously they added Jeff Carter to the team. I'm looking here, not really seeing any other changes. San Jose Sharks, Brent Burns, Eric Carlson, both 87s still. I mean, I don't know, they probably could be like 86s, but whatever. Uh, Carlson also still has high franchise, but he's a veteran, so you know, it's arguable how much the potential even matters. Uh, yeah, looking at the San Jose Sharks, pretty much the same. St. Louis Blues there, I mean, if you're using play now, Tarasenko obviously now healthy, uh, but that shouldn't really matter for franchise. Hoffman 85, low lead's a little high, uh, he should be like 84 max, maybe even an 83, honestly, he hasn't been that great this season. Uh, Kyra there, still 83, so yeah, it looks like, again, St. Louis Blue is the exact same. Tampa Lightning here, one thing I'm actually curious to see is what David Savard's contract looks like on the Lightning. Look at that, just over a million dollars, obviously it was retained twice before they got him, so uh, I was wondering, you know, how that would look in franchise. Same goes for Felino, I guess, uh, who we'll see on Toronto. Sorelli, 84, medium top six. Again, I think he should be a high top six. I think Palat should be 85. Uh, he's played so good this year. I think he deserves it. Again, I guess the argument of how much you value this year compared to other years, but um, sometimes they really highly value this year, other times they don't. So um, I think, you know, we definitely still need a bit more consistency in our ratings. 
Uh, the Leafs here, Nylander I think was a low leap before, he's now medium elite again. Cylinder Pasternak, I figured that was probably a fluke, they messed up. How that happens, I have no idea, but somehow it did. Uh, Felino there, yeah, 1.375 million with the double retention. Um, whole medium seven just makes no sense, should be at least medium top six. Galchenyuk here, now this is interesting, I believe they downgraded him to low elite. Um, maybe even like low top six, medium top six. He's back to a medium lead on the Leafs. Uh, that is interesting for sure. Again, somehow I think maybe they just mess up random potentials and then they put them back or I don't know. Maybe they play with it to see uh, kind of how they grow and forget to put it back. Uh, Canucks here, again, they're not really going to have any changes. Look to be the exact same. Vegas Gold Knights here, guys, same as last time. I think Theodore's underrated. Should be like 87 high top four minimum. Uh, so they need to bump his rating potential both a bit. I think Patch Ready could be 87 uh, with how good of a season he's having. After that, everyone, like I said, looks to be the same there. Uh, Washington Capitals here, of course, are now going to have Anthony Mantha. Uh, you can see 84 overall, medium elite. Tom Wilson there. What's this guy's uh, aggressiveness? 94, discipline, 65. I think that's pretty fair. Char is still overrated there, 84. Uh, it should be like an 82 max. 84 for him makes no sense. Let's see, is Lundqvist still the starter? He is still the starter, 84 overall. Like, come on, he needs to be 82 max. That way, if he was healthy, Samson would still be the starter as that would reflect what real life would have been. Um, kind of annoys me when things like that happen. Winnipeg Jets here. Nick Ehlers, is 86. He could be 87 minimum. Uh, if not, same as Connor, 88. He's had that good of a season. I think 87, honestly, would be fair for Ehlers. Uh, I know Dubois, they downgraded 84 last time. Um, even actually Andrew Kopp's having a really good season. He could be 82. Um, other than that, looks to be the exact same. So those are all the NHL ratings, guys. I'm going to quickly double check the goalies, but I'm sure no changes. All right, guys, so there's a few things I want to point out with the goalies. Jerry Swayman here is now on the Boston Bruins roster. 21 years old, 75 overall, medium starter. Isn't a bad rating, but I think when you compare it to Spencer Knight, it's definitely a little bit too low. Obviously, Knight's a better prospect, hasn't lost in the NHL. He's only played three games, but still, Swayman's actually played really well coming in for Boston. Now, he's got a really good team in front of him, but I think 75 is honestly a little bit too low. For me, at least 77, maybe 78. Again, with a goalie, I feel like you can be a lot easier with the ratings because goalies never, you know, grow crazy, don't have a ton of value. Like, it's fine kind of, you know, maybe overrating them a little bit. It's better than honestly underrating them too much. Carolina here, Mrazic still an 84. I think it could be an 85. He's looked so good for Carolina when healthy this year. Um, after that, I wanted to point out Minnesota Wild here. Kakin 84, Talbot 83. Doesn't really seem right to me. Talbot's the starter. Um, he's played way more games than Kakinen, especially in the last you know month or so. I think when they made this rating, Kakinen was on that hot streak where Talbot was out. He was playing great. Talbot's the starter though, so in that case, this doesn't really reflect that. I think Kakinen then should be max 83, if not swap the ratings. Um, again, I want it to kind of like reflect what's in real life. You're clearly going to be starting the goalie that's better, not the goalie that's worse. Already kind of touched on Sorokin there. Now the Senators here, one interesting thing. I believe after the trade deadline roster update, Murray had medium starter. Uh, he now has medium elite. So he was medium elite like two roster updates ago. They dropped him to starter. Now he's back to medium elite. I don't really know how it works. Uh, Brinnington there, low fringe is weird, but he's 27. Tampa Bay, Vasilevsky now has low lead potential. This guy's going to win the Vesna Trophy and they downgraded him. How does that make any sense? 91 low lead. He was 91 medium lead before. Again, I don't know what happens with these tiny potential changes. It's really weird. I'd love to figure it out because I have no idea. Um, but I think that is it uh, for goalie changes. Uh, again, I don't, I don't really understand some of them. I want to point out a few things to you guys with top prospects. As far as I could tell, no changes. So uh, in case you're wondering in regards to the next phenom, Connor Bedard, who's tore up the WHL, averaging basically two points a game. Two points a game as well at the under-18 tournament. He's 15 years old doing all that, and he's medium lead potential. I mean, Otto Ratu had high elite last year, if you guys want some context here. Bedard needs to be at least high elite, if not franchise. His rating makes absolutely no sense to me. Also, too, if you look at his shooting, it's pretty powerful, but not that accurate. This guy's a sniper, so if you want him to like, actually grow in franchise and be a good shooter, his accuracy has to go up. Um, so I guess some other notable guys I'll show you in case you're wondering. Similar to Bedard, right there is still only a medium elite. I think he should be a high elite, maybe franchise. Uh, he's about as good as Bedard in terms of a prospect. Bedard is actually looking like might have a bit of an edge just because how good he's doing at 15 years old. Same goes for Lambert. Uh, he's going to be like one of the better prospects. He should also be high elite. Why they're not doing that, kind of making these guys cooler in franchise opposed to having made up guys franchise high elite. 
I have no idea. Uh, they've actually made a change to a goalie I've been asking for a change for in Sweden. Jesper Wallstedt, gonna go top 15 for sure, maybe top 10, even top 5. Went from medium starter to low lead. So, in terms of potential, this is technically an upgrade, but in trade value, it's actually a downgrade. No idea why they made this change. Maybe they meant to make him medium lead and accidentally made him low lead. That's the only thing I can think of. As we saw with other players, maybe that's what happened. But honestly, this guy, bare minimum, should be a medium lead goalie. Honestly, he should probably be high elite, if not franchise. As like I said, he's going to go at least top 15 in the draft. And so to have that happen in the draft, he needs to be franchise. So obviously, you know, you have to decide where you want to kind of push his potential. Do you want to make it so he goes realistically in the draft? Does he realistically grow? But my just for wallstead has been medium franchise. And he never gets that crazy rated, like usually a low 90, which, you know, is where a first round pick goalie should end up. So uh, still some weird ratings there with the prospects. The new players they added though, Caulfield, Knight, uh, Pinto, Bernard Docker, Jones, I think all actually had really good ratings. So good to see that, but some of the existing ratings and some of the small changes they made, I still don't quite understand. But that's me, guys, for this roster review. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, hit that sub button. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.